Hi everyone, I'm Sostein and welcome to my channel. Today's episode is going to be slightly different from the usual format because I'm not going to be sewing. Instead, I'm going to talk about the process of photographing my costumes and the tips I have for making sure that they come out right. Honestly, the whole thing started several years ago when I realized I had no great photos of literally any of my costumes. I felt like it was such a waste that I spent all this time and money and effort and heart making each of these costumes and basically no good photos of any of them before they got trampled, dirtied, or outgrown, so I wouldn't even have the costume to show for it. And then let's take this one, this Maka outfit. This is from Maka from Soul Eater. I was so proud of it. I actually drafted this coat, and it's the first time in my life I actually drafted a coat in my life, and I loved it. It came out so good, and I, I felt like it fit perfectly, but really this is literally the only photo I have of it because about one month after I made this outfit, there was a fire in my apartment. The dress burnt is burnt to a crisp and that's it. Like I have nothing to show for this outfit except for this one bad photo. So for this reason, I just really want to tell people like take photos of your outfit before you don't fit or you lose it or it literally burns to a crisp. So my dear husband has been an incredible incredibly supportive of my sewing. But he made it clear from the beginning that he had no desire to ever become an Instagram husband. A husband devoted to photographing his wife in all sorts of situations. I felt like the YouTube video really cemented his desire to never live that life and no amount of cajoling, bribing, and begging was ever going to change his mind. So I decided I needed to hire a photographer to take photos of me. Just one or two of in each outfit so that I could really capture how the dress looked and felt and capture the joy I felt wearing that costume just even once while it fit right. So let's start with tip number one. Get the photographs of your costumes as soon as you make it. Honestly, I'd say within six months of finishing the garment. The fact is, garments degrade over time. The costumes we see now in museums are not the same garments that they were 20, 50, 100, 200 years ago. Fabric is such a delicate medium and the whites and creams yellow with age. Like look at this beautiful Art Nouveau lace gown. I can't even imagine how beautiful it looked when the white was still actually white rather than yellowed with time. I find that my body has changed so much pre and post baby that a lot of costumes simply no longer fit period. And after a couple of balls, the dresses get stained, torn, trampled, trims fall off, and it just gets worn out. And for one to refuse to not wear a costume in a, an attempt to preserve it seems to just defeat the purpose of making a costume. So that's tip number one, get your photos early. I personally make a point that I, try, that I meet with my photographer twice a year and photographs all the gowns I make in that period in one photo shoot. That way the fabric is still fresh, it's not damaged, the embroidery is still clean and crisp, and hopefully they still fit just right. I decided I needed to document not just the process of making the dress, but also the process of wearing it. I actually looked at a bunch of different photographers in my area. One place I highly recommend for uh, looking for photographers is Instagram. For instance, I live in the suburbs of St. Louis, Missouri, so I follow the hashtag STL photographer. Just going through this hashtag, you'll see so many different styles of photographers. People who photo focus on landscapes, weddings, headshots. Everyone has their own style and take. This brings us to tip number two. Find a photographer that fits the style you want. Rather than finding, finding any local photographer and trying to have them mimic another photographer's style. Everyone has a style that they're good at and I think it's the best thing to bring out that person's forte. What I look for in Malcolm's photographer is very different from what I look for in a photographer for myself. For instance, when um, Malcolm's photographer, who is amazing, Kelly Williams, I pick someone who is fast, versatile, and incredibly close by and just has a real knack for getting babies to smile and catch their attention. And she is just a killer at that. So um, yeah, so you could see her work. She's so good at capturing Malcolm and the whole family, but it's a very different style from say Lindsay who does my other portrait stuff. I really recommend looking through a photographer's like full gallery and just look to see if their method and their lighting really fits with the feeling that you'd like them to capture. And that's so important when commissioning anyone. So while I was looking, I came across Lindsay Hinderer, who has a fantastic gift for capturing light, 
fabric and with a certain delicacy when, cap when photographing women especially. One thing I'll hope you see in these photos is how we have both grown with each other over time. Now before I do that, I would like to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor who has been kind enough to sponsor today's video as well as my next photo shoot, Verb Energy. So you'll notice that I have a lot of hobbies and jobs and so forth. So w one thing that I feel is very important is maximizing the time that I have to make it work within everything that I want to do. So to do that, I actually find that caffeine is my vice of choice. So whether I'm at the hospital or at home sewing, my energy level starts to flag around 1 p.m. and I also get quite hungry being used to having lunch at 10 a.m. It's a hospital thing. Believe me when I say that other anesthesiologists will likely understand why. I used to try to do coffee in the afternoon, but I found that this was incredibly difficult, making it all the way to the doctor's lounge without getting phone calls, making myself a Keurig, then waiting for it to be cool enough to cut chug, and then chug, chug it as hard as I can, then run back to the operating room. That was really hard. Moreover, drinking an entire like cup of coffee um, and then not needing to pee an hour and a half later is something that's really hard to do because let's face it, when you're in operating room, the only way you're gonna get to go to the bathroom is if someone else comes and gets you out and that's really hard too. So recently I discovered Verb Energy Bars, which are basically caffeinated energy bars with about 90 calories of goodness in each one. They're delicious and on top of that, they have the same amount of caffeine as a shot of espresso and they've been so incredibly helpful at getting me through the day. They come in this beautiful package, which fits really well into a purse or a scrub pocket so I can carry it around with me until I'm ready and is really quick and easy and delicious to eat between cases. I find these to be helpful at work and at home and I can simply munch on it while watching Murdoch Mysteries, for instance. And again, they fit into a pocket. The texture on these is based on oats, so they've got this really great bite. Being made out of oats also means that they're gluten-free, dairy-free, and vegan. They have a ton of delicious flavors, including vanilla latte, my personal favorite, chocolate chip banana, and pumpkin spice. Verb has a really awesome trial pack where you can try their top four flavors for just the cost of shipping, which is less than a dollar. The first 1,000 people to use my link in the descriptions can avail of this offer and you can try this out for yourself. Thank you, Verb, for helping me stay awake and keep sewing and working. Meanwhile, let's talk about how to book a photographer. After I found Lindsay through my hairstylist and Instagram, I messaged her and we met up in person. So I am so excited for a shoot. <laughs> me too, it's gonna be so fun. And we met and talked about for about half an hour and she showed me a Pinterest board of ideas she had, mostly consisting of 18th century portraiture and how she wanted to capture that feeling of modern day painting, except in the format of photography, of course. I did ask her that we make it happier since a lot of 18th century portraiture tends to be a little really somber. This brings me to tip number three, be crystal clear in what you want. A lot of times we're people pleasers. We just say whatever you want. If you genuinely feel that way or you don't have a strong opinion, that's one thing, but oftentimes the photographer does better with some degree of guidance on what you're looking for. I asked for a lot of smiles and a lot of joy, and that's really what I got in this first photo shoot. And then we set a day. Which brings me to tip number four. Work with a photographer who has a hair and makeup specialist already. Honestly, it helps when that photographer and that makeup specialist already have a relationship. Like this means that the makeup artist will know what kind of makeup will work best in that lighting and vice versa. So having that relationship is really important so that you can have it so that the cost of the makeup artist is added to the shoot. And having someone who can do the hair and makeup just right adds so much to any shoot. Mally, I am so excited to see you do 1960s Audrey Hepburn hair and makeup. Oh right? my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm so excited for that. So we did our first photo shoot. She brought in a hair and makeup stylist, the incredibly talented Savannah Summer from Savannah Summer Beauty. The funny thing is we did all of the looks precisely the way I wanted. Lots of smiles, lots of light, lots of accessories. And then Lindsay had a suggestion. Now that we've done the shots that I wanted, perhaps we could do a couple of ones that were more her style. She painted me up in white makeup, the uh, historically accurate 18th century makeup, in fact, and then posed me in my, in my corset. Like, this was completely unexpected, but I figured, you know what, I'm working with a professional. I want to see what her version looks like. And I let her pose me exactly as she wanted and you know, with just a hint of a smile. And honestly, I think it was some of the best photos of the shoot. This brings me to tip number five, which may be the most important. Be open-minded. 
you're working with professionals and other artists. If you'd like, you can hire someone to do exactly what you want every single time. But if you keep an open mind, you can do so much more than that just of just one person. You can collaborate with other artists and bring their vision and their expertise to combine with yours. And in my opinion, that makes something that's better than the, just the parts. So on that day, Lindsay put me in my corset and took some photos of me. And then while I was looking at the photos on her laptop, I remembered that I had brought a work in progress. It wasn't even done yet. It was just something that was partially done, but maybe it would bring a splash of color because you know I thought maybe it was just a little bit too white. And what it was, was actually my red dress. I had, in fact, only brought it with me so I could just like hand sew it while I was like waiting for stuff. And it wasn't even fully trimmed, only the left side was done. So the right side was just like an empty mass of pins. Well, she had me drape it on and she took the photos in such, an, in such a way that it was only from one angle so you wouldn't see the unfinished side. These were my single favorite shots of the day. The funny thing is, it was at this time that I realized that you could capture the joy and beauty of wearing a costume without a big smile. That little hint of a smile spoke volumes more than my big ones, and this subtlety in art was just mind-blowing. It's just always such a pleasure seeing what another artist brings to the table and working with them. Recently, I also started working with um, Mallory Harris, who's a, who's a hair and makeup artist. I just love color. I just love color so much. And I just love brushes and I just want to be all <laughs> With so much vision. She has such a flair and eye for beauty and it's been such a pleasure working with her. And now I'll just let these photos and videos speak for themselves. something you can feel too that's kind of like an intangible thing when we're in the photo shoot when there's like those moments where we're all like oh my gosh I've gotten goosebumps or you just like feel like or one of us gets like emotional because it's it's like a I don't know it's a I think it's the all of the like effort of everyone coming together you know it creates these moments and that's also like that's what I think of too when I look at the finished picture. them to look beautiful and look at the photo and say I look beautiful but I want them to feel like feel it in their session like feel beautiful and yes not feel uptight and <laughs> like they're picking themselves apart but I want when they look at the picture I want them to say I look incredible but I also want them to say to like remember that they felt incredible in that moment.
So that's really the moral of the story. If you do nothing else, I hope you take the time to record all the things that you do and all the things that you love to do. If you like this, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe.